Hey everyone, it's Anand from underdogstrength.com and today I have a very special video for you guys. I was just interviewed by none other than Troy Brown who is a pro bodybuilder and is the host of one of my favorite podcasts of all time which is called The Persistence Factor. And on this episode, we talk about my own weight loss journey and how I lost over 125 pounds and have kept it off for so many years. We also talked about what techniques I use to make sure that my coaching clients also achieve some of the same results. And most importantly, we also go into the mental aspect of things. What kind of mindset do you need to achieve your goals in life? So if you're struggling in your life, if you're looking to whether you want to change your body or you want to take your business to the next level, anything like that, then you do not want to miss this episode. Greetings, welcome back. It is your good friend, your host, Mr. Troy Governor Brown. And I have, as always, I always say I've got a great guest in store, but I really, really do. Honestly, you know I love success stories when it comes to transformation. You know I love weight loss transformations when people just can they get into that phase of their life where they say enough is enough and they can literally transform because they made a freaking decision. And this individual that I'm about to bring on, Anand, is such a great guy when it comes to understanding how the body works, but he's been for it himself. You know, I always talk about success leads close. So if you're a man and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you hate the way you look, you hate the way you feel, and you're embarrassed with your current situation, I really want you to take an Anand's story and really listen to what he's about to say because he's going to unleash the fury. He's going to tell you how he did it and how he's been able to keep it off. But more importantly, what he's doing now and how he's transforming people's lives and bodies all because he made a decision, a decision to transform his life. And I believe, listen to this, he's down 125 pounds and he's kept it off. But I'm not going to spoil it because I want him to do his due diligence and tell him his story and his story on how it's really going to apply to you. But more importantly, how it's going to allow you to be successful in your transformation. So you've got to surround yourself with individuals like this. I always talk about the law of association. You are who you surround yourself with. And you surround yourself with the right people that have what you want, you're going to be successful. So I encourage you to go check out Anad on Instagram because success leaves clues. And I want his behaviors to rub off onto you. So I know there's a lot of men out there that are struggling right now and they, they're not in the, sh the shape they want. They don't have the health they want. They don't have the vibrancy they want. But it all stems from making a decision and make sure that you listen to individuals like this gentleman I'm about to bring on right now. So Anand, how are you doing, brother? I believe you're all the way from sunny, sunny California. I'm in Ontario. It's miserable. It's damp. It's snowing. It's cold. But you're in California and I'm in Ontario. That really sucks for me. <laughs> how are you doing, brother? I'm doing great, Troy. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for having me and giving me this opportunity and platform to be able to share my story with your audience. Oh, my, my pleasure. As soon as I saw your Instagram and I looked at your Instagram and it said 125 pounds down and then a creator of the Power Shred program, I was like, okay, let me just check this guy out. Let me see what he's all about. I started watching some of your technique in terms of the gym, what you do in terms of movements and your form. And I started reading up how you are a student of Grant Cardone and you're very like-minded, but what I get really excited about is when I see those before and afters. I've got a thing about seeing before and afters. It gets me so inspired. I'm, a, I'm an individual that gets very inspired very easily, and I love success stories. So when I look at your transformation, not only do I get inspired, but I'm like, this guy, he has to get on my show because this is what I preach. This is what I'm all about is changing the mind in order to change the body. So for the listeners that don't know who you are, why not share your background, what you're all about, your darkest moments, and how you, how you were able to turn it all around? Because this story right here, I want everyone, every man that's listening to really understand that if this individual can do it, so can they. So tell me your background, man. I'm excited to talk to you. Sure. So, yeah, my name is Anand. Um, I live in California now. Uh, and I was actually born in California, but uh, as you can probably tell from my accent, my I for the most part, I grew up in India because my parents moved back when I was around three years old. So right. I lived in India for many years, experienced that whole side of the world. 
and you know a d- totally different culture and things like that and now i'm back in california for the last 7 plus years but my as far as i can remember i was always overweight as far as my memory goes i, I don't remember a time where i was like uh, lean even as a kid right and it was a struggle because not only to it's uh, i would say back in india it's you know being overweight is even less common compared to i would say the us so it's and it's 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 a struggle because not only do you have issues with not finding any good clothes that fit you or you know not being able to play the sports that your friends are playing yeah. you know, it was almost like a a handicap in a way because you know i'm not mobile like other people even though i'm i'm just a kid right i can't play the same sports mm. um stuff like that but if that wasn't enough people used to bully me a lot like every single day people used to make fun of me and this could also be like random strangers on the street you know i could be walking down the street and people would like laugh at me or point at me so that yeah kind of forced me into a lot of social isolation because i i was trying to cut myself away from the world so in a way it, it was holding me back right and what inspired me was probably my favorite movie of all time is is the rocky movies no way all right okay we'll, we'll keep carrying on but i want to talk about this a little bit more but carry on i'm intrigued so and if you know rocky is like the ultimate underdog story right and for this reason i i started this brand called underdog strength because i want to teach people that being an being an underdog in life is actually your strength you know having that chip on your shoulder and you know just because if people don't expect you to do something as long as you believe in yourself and you know that you're capable of more you can rise above so so that's my story and then I like how you in the introduction said that it's all about making that decision. Yeah. And to be honest, I was fed up with with my lack of results because I I tried all these fad diets and back then there was no social media when I was starting out. Like I was a teenager when I was starting out. So I took the advice of the local trainer at the gym who would like tell me you need to do like hours of cardio and you need to do these crash diets and you know don't eat all these foods and stuff like that that doesn't it's not really sustainable until yeah. i said you know enough is enough and i distinctly remember the moment i made that decision and that was i was watching this video by arnold schwarzenegger on youtube and the video is i think the video is called still pumping so it, it was like a follow up to pumping iron i know it well and, yeah and arnold says uh you got to set a goal and you got to make a decision and say this is what i want to do and i'm going to do whatever it takes and as soon as i saw that video i said this i repeated the message to myself i said this is what i want to do and i'm going to do whatever it takes so and so so what why did you in that moment like what made you cuz there's a lot of people that are going to be listening they want to know like that defining moment i talk about it a lot when a man gets to the point where he's just done like he slams his hand down on the table and he says i am done i am not living this way anymore describe that moment why that moment was it something that arnold said or was it maybe a sign from the higher power from the universe telling you something or was it just something inside of you that just snapped mm-hmm. so i would say for the most part i was so frustrated with the lack of results because i i would try to lose 10 pounds and then afterwards i would gain back 15 to 20 pounds so this the cycle of yo yo dieting and then uh, resulted in me being like fatter and fatter every time so yeah. th- that frustration was building up inside of me but then i'll be honest with you for a, for a short period of time i actually got uh, complacent and i i, I thought you know maybe i'm meant to be fat you know maybe i'm getting lean or i'm getting strong is not for me mm. and i should just accept it and try to live my life but then i don't know what happened but i'm like you know this i this is not for me i can do better i don't have to accept my situation because other people have done it and if they can do it why can't i so i was looking at these inspirational people like arnold and stallone from rocky so uh and i really look up to them and i said if they can achieve such massive success why can't i 
do something like losing my body weight. And I also said to myself in that moment that if I can do this, if I can pull this off, then I can do anything. So th- this was while you're in India, correct? This was while I was in India. So, and, and you basically were kind of entertaining the idea of transforming your body. How long for, like, how long did it go on where you were thinking, you know what, I, I could do something here. I could potentially change my body, but you hadn't really made that decision. So how long did it take before you made that final decision when you heard the words from Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger? How long was that process for you when you finally made that all out burning yeah. decision? Believe it or not, I've been trying to lose weight when even when I was like 10, 10 or 12 years old. Uh, it was that early because my parents used to take me to like these weight loss clinics and things like that because I was so overweight. Uh, the first time I stepped into a gym when I was 13 years old because uh, that was the minimum age to join the gym. And that's when I first started lifting weights ever and started seeing results. But when I saw Arnold's video, I was probably 18 or 19 years old. So I would say it's a span of around five years or so until I said enough is enough and I need to do something about this, take, take massive action because mm. really what I'm doing right now is not working. Okay, so you made the decision and you, you heard the words from Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger that inspired you to take action. So what, what was step one for you? What did you decide to do in that moment? Like, because you obviously made a decision, a conscious decision that we both believe and we preach to our clients. So what was next for you? I would say the next step was I got really obsessed with learning to see what's, what's working, what's not working, because I said I have to figure it out first. And also I... I sought out people who are genuinely experts in this that that have achieved results and have helped other people achieve results. So who's the best in the world? And I thought, you know, I, my goal, ultimate goal is to go from being overweight to having a lean and strong body, right? I just, I don't want to be like a skinny guy. I don't want to be skinny fat. I want to mm-hmm. have that a certain lean and strong physique. Right? Yes. And who, who are some of the leanest and strongest people out there? You know, so it's, it's going to be bodybuilders because they know, they know how to uh, eat, eat right in terms of nutrition. They know how to lift weights and they know how to get shredded. Mm. So I thought if they can get so shredded, then maybe if I follow what they have to teach, I can achieve some sort of success, even though I don't compete in bodybuilding. So I the, one of the first websites I went to was bodybuilding.com for that reason. So you had all the resources there, like you had all the information. It was just a, basically now you had to apply the information. Right. And I've always said at the beginning of this episode, we were just talking about success leaves clues. So you kind of already had an idea that you needed to go follow somebody and um, get some ideas and concepts. And we already spoken earlier, which was so important. I'm glad I actually brought it up. I was talking about environments, everything. So you were in India and the people that maybe you're associating with maybe were the other side of the world. Maybe they were in the UK or in in North America as an example. So you already were at a disadvantage, but I always say to a lot of people is that the world isn't necessarily getting bigger. The world is getting smaller due to technology. Mm -hmm. So you really leveraged technology and you probably were on social media following these individuals and Mm -hmm. seeing what they were doing, seeing how they were living their lifestyle. Correct. A hundred percent. I attribute so much of my success to the internet and it came at the right time when I was getting started because when I was just getting started, I think YouTube had just started about 10 years ago. So it was just around that time when all the information started to flow and, uh, you know, it opened up a whole new world. You know, I no longer had to rely on the local trainer at the gym for advice or, you know, people who were around me who have never done anything with fitness, but they, they're always happy to give you advice, right? Yeah. So it helped me identify and reach out and learn from the best people. And yeah, the internet is just amazing. It's changed my life completely. Okay. This is so good. All right. Now you said something earlier that I want to talk about. You said obsession. Now it's a word that's used a lot with the gen population. They see maybe someone like yourself, they don't know your story, but they look at your Instagram and they will say, Oh, he is obsessed with 
health and fitness. He's obsessed with eating a certain way. Look, at, look, look, look what he's doing. Like these people, these fitness people, they're obsessed. Like they have no balance. What do you say to that? What, what's, what's your, um, what's the first thought that comes to your mind when people talk about obsession in such a negative way? Cause I believe it can be used negatively and positively, right? A hundred percent. And I've, I've had people tell me this exactly, including my family members that, you know, you're so obsessed with this. Why can't you just eat normally? You know, why can't you hang out with us, my friends and family? Why do you have to be so obsessed? And, uh, I don't know. It's it. It might be a part of my nature because if I, I find that if I really want something, I go after it. But I think, I think for the most part, you know, like Grant Cardone has a book called "Be Obsessed or Be Average." Yeah, uh, and uh, I completely resonate with that message because, to a certain degree, if you want to achieve massive success, now if I want to lose ten pounds, I don't think I need to be obsessed about it. You know, but I knew I had to lose close to half my body weight. And you know, that requires what is called massive action. You know, like, uh, you know how Grant, I was just at Grant Cardone's event this weekend. So that's right. why I'm coming up with this course. But you know, the, that's the fourth level of action. If you've read the 10X rule, you, you know, and if you want to achieve massive success, you need to take massive action. And that obsession just comes with it. And I, I feel like once you're, once you made that decision, it's it's not hard to be obsessed. It's just it's what you focus on, and, uh, and as far as what you tell to people, in in my experience, a lot of the people who started telling me that I was obsessed after they saw my results, they came back to me and asked me for advice. Interesting. And, yeah, they, and they were like, "You got to teach me how you did it," and so it's like uh, people might. Yeah, people might be surprised at seeing a massive change in you initially. It throws them off. And there's genuinely people who are also haters when they see other people putting in the work and they're they're insecure about them not taking action. But eventually, I would say just focus on becoming successful with your obsession. And eventually, a lot of those people are going to ask you for advice or become your followers. So true. So good. Oh my goodness. You said so much in that uh, statement there. there. There's so much stuff I want to touch on. You said, oh, by the way, side note, when I originally came up with this idea of the persistence factor, my old mentor, Bob Proctor, I called him. And my original name for this show was actually the, the persistent obsession. I wanted the word obsession in there. So it's very funny that we're talking about obsession because I believe healthy obsession is a very good and, and essential for a human being in order to be successful in any endeavor, especially transformation. Mm -hmm. So what do, what do you say to people? Let's say you have a client that maybe were, is in a similar position as you. They've made that decision. They're going all in. They're going to go for it. They're going to get the weight. They're going to sustain it. And they're going to live a certain lifestyle. They're going to change their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those individuals that's, that they're getting a lot of resistance they get a lot of ridicule from their family, friends, mm -hmm. about what they're doing, about this healthy obsession that they have with health and fitness. Mm -hmm. What do you say to your to someone that maybe has reached out for you, to you for inspiration, mm -hmm. and they say to you, "My family's given me so much resistance because I'm trying to be healthy. Can you give me some words of advice on this, please?" Yes, this is actually quite common. A lot of my online coaching clients have this issue, yeah. and I'll give you an example. One person was even afraid of going to the gym because he said uh, I tried going once as a complete beginner and people were laughing at me so there's a lot of resistance uh, in, in that situation because yeah. uh, people are the so what what I tell them is there's two things first of all is I ask them is your health and your goals, are they more important or is it more important that you care about what other people have to say so you got to make that decision first, you know, what, what's more important and put that first. Second thing is I teach communication. You, you got to be clear with your intent, with your family members, with your friends that, you know, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to achieve. And if I would appreciate it, if you supported me yeah. and if you just make it clear, that clears up a lot of things instead of then 
not communicating it to them and then expecting them to uh, try to support you. And then if when they don't support you, then you end up being passive aggressive in your behavior. And that causes a lot of resentment in terms of your relationship. So I would say communication is key. Just make it clear. And most people would understand. Uh, it's, you know, um, it's, it's like when, when you're clear about your own intent and also you also communicate your intent and it, it makes things a lot easier for sure. And yeah. you co- and one thing I struggle with is, is I recently read a book called no more Mr. Nice guy. Mm. And cause it's, it's like, especially the culture I grew up in, right. Where they always teach you to, you have to respect people, respect your elders, never speak up. It's it kind of it can hold you back because then it, it can stop you from achieving your goals, and you gotta learn to set boundaries. That's the biggest takeaway from the book. And then when people cross those boundaries, then you need to let them know. Be assertive about it. Don't just go along with uh, just because everyone is uh, telling you you should join us, you should eat a certain way, you shouldn't do this. Doesn't mean that you have to do it. You can make your you can communicate in a clear way with, mm. without, without insulting them, but just set, set clear boundaries for yourself that this is what I want to do. These are my goals. And if someone tries to cross it, you need to communicate it. So one of the first things that you would encourage people to do if they've made that decision to change their health is to sit down with their family members and open the lines of communication with their family and, and friends and tell them about what I'm about to do. And most importantly, I need your help and support, right? hundred percent. So and the, good. And the other thing is oftentimes when you put your goals out there, whether it's social media or to other people, it also puts more pressure on you to achieve those goals. So that's like an added bonus to it. Mm, absolutely. That, that's a great point. So, so true. Hadn't thought of it that way, actually. So what do you do? Like one of the key things I get from a lot of people, because we're both in the same industry is they say, Aned, I need motivation. I'm on, I'm not motivated today. I'm not motivated to eat this food. I'm not motivated to go to the gym because it's snowing outside. I'm not mo- motivated to go to the gym after work because I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Like what, what, what do you say to those individuals? Do, do you offer any words of advice yeah. or you just basically show through action and, and be the leader? And, and I always say, you know, le- leader of one leader of many, if you can't lead one, then you can't lead any. So you basically you're leading yourself. And as you lead yourself, you become this source of inspiration. So maybe, maybe talk to the listeners about this, because I think this is a very, very, interesting point about how you stay inspired on a consistent daily basis. That's right. And I would say motivation is, is important for you to get started as the classic quote goes, right? Motivation is what gets you started and habits are what keep, uh, keep you going. I, I definitely think that's the case, even with fitness or any goal, but uh, I, I think for the most part, I don't feel motivated every day to work out or do things, but I do it anyway. And there's a concept where you you try to detach from your feelings for the most part. And uh, in, in, in the powerlifting circles, so I also compete in powerlifting. Um, wow. And a lot of training, they, what, there's, a, there's a quote that goes around that says, how you feel is a lie. And... I've, I've had so many situations where I was like, I don't feel like going to the gym today. I'm so tired. And I, but then I told myself, let me just go in for a little bit. And I ended up setting like all time PRs in the gym. And where did that come from? So interesting. Yeah. How you feel is, is not always true. How you feel is a lie. I like that. And yeah. I like what you said, how you would turn it around and you sort of play a game with yourself. And you said, maybe I'll just go in f- for a little while. I'll yeah. just go in for maybe a, a, you know, a 15, 20 minute workout, nothing crazy. And then you end up going and you have the workout of your life. Isn't that interesting? That always happens. Yeah. And even uh, some simple things like if just putting on your gym shoes, right? Just put on your gym shoes and you, you, you start start to go get back into that routine, right? You, it's start, going to start building momentum. Or just put on your gym clothes, put on your gym shoes and see how you feel. You, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to feel like taking the next step. 
you know, then you're going to step in your car and drive to the gym. Yeah. So, yeah. Just it, get started. Just get started. Absolutely. Start where you are. Um, it, it's kind of interesting. You're talking about this because you know what I, I, I tell a lot of people when they don't feel like doing something, it's just their old paradigm trying to hold them back. Meaning their old paradigm is a multitude of habits that are deep rooted in our subconscious mind. And they keep raising this ugly head to stop us from getting ahead because our brain or our mindset, whatever you want to call it, wants us to stay in the status quo. It doesn't want us to get ahead. So that's maybe what you were going through when you were in the position when you didn't want to do something, but you forced yourself to do it anyway. You understood that I made a commitment to myself. I stand by my self-promises, but also I understand how my mind works. I understand I've still got those negative old habit behaviors that are there and they're going to hold me back. And it's understanding that that's okay, but you force yourself and do it anyway. Right. Is, is that what you're saying that the paradigm is so mm-hmm. strong? Cause it can, I say that the paradigm is so sneaky. It will literally talk you out of anything. It will talk you out of going to the gym. It will talk you out of not eating healthily. It will talk you out, not go, not doing your 10,000 steps or drinking, you know, half of your body weight in ounces as an example for water intake. So yeah. What do you think about those bad habits that we all have? Right. Because there's so many people out there that are really, really struggling right now. And, and you've obviously done it and you've maintained it. But why are so many why are so many people struggling with, with, with their weight? Because you're in India and you went to bodybuilding.com, mm-hmm. which is a free service that has every individual training program under the sun. It has all the nutritional concepts that you need to be successful. But my point is, as I slam my hand down on the table, why are so many people struggling with their health? I, I think the biggest thing is, People are looking at the short term and, and trying to find the quick fix instead of what actually works in the long term. And the information is out there. And you don't need to be an expert to know that if you want to lose weight, then you need to work out and you need to eat fewer calories and you know control your diet. It's, it's not rocket science. Everyone knows it. So either consciously or subconsciously, everyone knows that's how you do it. But people are seeking other ways in, in which, uh, you know, should I follow this fat diet or should I try this diet this month? Should I do this training? Like, you know, how these new things always come up, right? And they're looking for the quick fix, but they never take the time to form the habits because the habit is what's going to keep you going. Because if, if you listening right now, if you struggle with, uh, staying on track, it's because you haven't formed the habit yet. And I promise you that, once you form those habits, it gets easier over time to stick to. And for me, it's it's just become a part of my lifestyle now that I, I don't have to think about eating healthy or going to the gym. It's just what I do. It's, mm-hmm. it's a part of my identity also, but it's just who I am now. So it's- what, what do you say about the word balance? Because it's a word that if I go on Facebook right now and, you know, I, I monitor Facebook a lot because I'm always trying to see if people need help. And I see the word balance thrown around a lot. I want balance. I want to be able to have a couple of glasses of wine every night. I want to be able to have a few beers every night. I want to be able to, you know, relax and, 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 and take time off and have this balanced lifestyle. What do you think about that word? Because it's a word that's thrown around a lot in our industry with the gym population, right? Right. Because they truly believe people like yourself are obsessed Mm -hmm. and you live a very, you live in a cave and you live this monk type of lifestyle, which we all know you don't. You, You live a healthy lifestyle, meaning that you may zig and zag maybe you live that 80 20 rule as an example well what do you say to to folks that talk about the word balance so i would say balance for the most part depends on where you are right now and your goals the 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 bigger goals you have the the less balanced it's gonna be like for me when when my goal was to lose over 100 pounds i i I can tell you i wasn't balanced because that was when my when i was really obsessed and I had to be off balance to achieve it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have achieved a massive goal. It's like if you want to make, if your goal is to make $50,000 a year, 
then you can have good balance. But if your goal is to make a million dollars a year, then it's not going to be that balance. So yeah. there's different levels or uh, depending on your goal. But I would say after I lost the weight and then my goal was no longer this massive goal of losing all this weight. It was more uh, to focusing on my training, getting stronger over time or simply maintaining what, what progress I made. My life was a lot more balanced. So I could, I could then, you know, cut back on my, let's say, hours of doing cardio or anything like that. I can go out to eat and you know, I can have more social activities, stuff like that. But, and it's the same thing if I'm prepping for a powerlifting meet, right? My, comp- my training leading up to a meet is going to be way harder than in the off season. Right. So I, I would say balance is important in the long term, but also depends on your goals. Um, mm. The bigger goals you have, the less balance it's going to be, regardless of what goals you have. You said something very interesting about if you have to lose 10 pounds, then you might not need, you, you can have you know some, a decent amount of balance. But if your goal is to lose 100 pounds, then, then there needs to be a system in place. There needs to be some type of regimen, a daily regimen in order to get there. Because... When you say that to me, when I think about what people do, and I've been doing this for 25 years, is when you tell them that their goal is to lose 100 pounds, they truly believe in their subconscious mind that they can do it just through winging it. But what you've had to, un- what you've had to go through, what, I, what I'm understanding is that you had to go through a lot of failure. You had to go through a lot of trial and error, but you stuck with it. You did not give up you basically stayed in the game even though you may have failed but you didn't even though it sounds cliche you didn't give up because you understood the bigger picture you understood that i had to go through this journey in order to get rid of that 125 pounds as an example so i think what i'm trying to say here is that if your goal is to lose 100 pounds and there's a man that's listening, he wants to lose 100 pounds, then he needs to do it in a systematic way. There's a science to doing this, right? And it's not, as you mentioned earlier, it's not rocket science. Mm-hmm. It's just new behaviors and new habits that they have to implement, but they also need that system and structure. And I believe that's where you can help them. And I believe mm-hmm. that's where I can help them too, right? So right. talk to people about, did you have a system in place how you lost that hundred over hundred pounds mm-hmm. because you tried before and you failed? That's right. So the, the system was, uh, first of all, I followed pretty much what the bodybuilders were doing back in the day uh, when I was in bodybuilding.com and they were teaching you need to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Uh, things that typically most people who follow weight loss diets don't do these things, right? They don't focus on, uh, you know, getting my protein and lifting weights. I would say the two two things or the main thing was I shifted my focus to strength training instead of typically what people go for is cardio right away. And I think strength training is the is the key to success because that's going to make the difference between weight loss and fat loss because they, they aren't always the same. So what, why is it the paradigm of people, the, the gen population, really think that to, or in order to get results, in order to lose fat, in order to lose weight, I have to do cardio? That's their blueprint. That's what they truly, truly believe. So if someone is listening right now and they're going to disagree with you, what, why is weight training, why is strength training so essential for transformation? Sure. So There's nothing wrong with cardio. In fact, I have a lot of my coaching clients do cardio because – it's got health benefits and it's a great way of burning calories. And yeah. that's one of the reasons people go to cardio because uh, just for the time you spend, you, you might be burning more calories doing cardio because it's for the most part a continuous activity, right? Where weight training is more like interval training. But, uh, but the thing is, just because you lose weight doing cardio doesn't mean that you're only losing fat. You could also be losing your lean body mass, mm. which is what we don't want. And, and that actually sets you up for failure in the long term. Because if you lose your, a lot of lean body mass, it's going to slow down your metabolic rate. And then once you stop dieting, first of all, you won't, be, you won't look a certain way. You, you, maybe you thought that you actually get lean, but then you'll end up looking skinny fat 
So that's going to demotivate you. So from a mental standpoint, it's, it's going to be really demotivating. And then it's, it's, a, it's a recipe for weight regain, which is what I've done multiple times. Uh, right. But with weight training and putting on some muscle while you're losing weight, it's not only going to look much better, but it's going to set you up for long-term success because right. you're going to have a healthier metabolic rate. You're going to look better. You're going to perform better. And then af- after you're done with your weight loss or fat loss, you then have the opportunity to continue training with weights and improving your, your body or physique over time. So I think the first focus should be on strength training. And then when you, when you have a solid program that has a strength focus, then you can add in some extra cardio if you need to uh, for health or for burning calories or whatever reason. Right. Okay. I got it. Okay. Fantastic. I, I like your answer there. So, with, with the people that are, are listening right now, you would say that when everything started to change for you was when you started lifting weights. 100%. Yeah. It's wanting to start a, a workout program, let's say they've not been in a gym before, let's say it's been years, they haven't stepped into a gym and they want to lose 50 pounds as an example, just an, an arbitrary number or 100 pounds. What would be a good way to start resistance training would there be a certain program or a certain training protocol that you you would recommend that they do in the beginning yeah so there's two ways of looking at this there's definitely some really great free programs out there that you can find uh, but at the same time you don't also don't want to overwhelm yourself so if you've never ever lifted weights then i would say just get started with something just go in the gym try different exercises doesn't have to be the best program but just just try different exercises and try to learn them and then once you once you gain some confidence in the gym then you can hop on a program right. but for the most part programs that actually work there's there's like different programs for beginners specifically if you want to get into uh, strength training and even powerlifting then full body programs are very popular and very effective. You know, something like starting strength is a book that I recommend most people read because it teaches you all the barbell and compound exercises, how to do them correctly. So starting strength is a good book. And if you follow the starting strength programs, they're pretty solid too. They're very minimalistic programs. So you don't need fancy equipment to do them. Uh, As you get a bit more advanced or if you want to focus more on bodybuilding style training, you could even do um, something like an upper lower program. Those, those are good. Uh, push pull legs is a popular uh, training split that people like to do. So all of those things work, um, I would say, but try to find a program that mainly focuses on the major compound lifts for the most part. So you know, squats, bench press, deadlifts, overhead press, those kind of lifts that actually give you more bang for your buck in terms of they use a lot of, a lot of muscle mass. Right. And, uh, and I'm not saying that's the, those are the only exercises you need to focus on, but that, that, that should be the main focus for most people. And then you can add in extra exercises as, as you need to. And right. So find something that, like that, but more importantly, find something that works for your lifestyle. Because I could tell you that to go to the gym six times a week, but if you're a busy professional and you only have three times a week to work out an hour or work out, then I probably wouldn't recommend you to go go for a, a full-on powerlifting program because they, those program those training sessions take really long. So you also gotta find what works for for you. It's it's uh, it's 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 not exactly a cookie cutter process. Yeah. So you got to take it seriously, right? And you, you said something that is important that they got to use a lot more compound type movements in, in their programming um, just so they can get used to moving their body in a certain way. Because the reason why the, the compound movements are probably so important is because they're going to obviously use a lot more energy, but at the same time, they're going to use a lot more, a, a lot more muscle to mm-hmm. move that particular weight. So as you mentioned, they're, they're getting more bang for their buck, right? That, that makes complete, complete sense. And I love that you gave the, some of the, the, the listeners uh, an idea on what books to read in the beginning of their transformation, because obviously good knowledge is, is power, right? To the individual, wouldn't you say? You've got to educate yourself 
along the road to your destination of maybe losing 50 to 100 pounds or whatever the case may be? Yeah, 100 percent. Knowledge is definitely power. But at the same time, I, I have coaching clients who are overwhelmed with knowledge and they, they, <laughs> they, they obsess over the wrong things. You know, we talked about obsess, ob- obsession, but even though they hired me as a coach to help them get focused on what they need to do, they still obsess over, should I be doing this? Am I yep. doing it wrong? And they're always worried about, uh, there's a fear of failure people have, right? And we, we all have that. Mm. We, we don't want to put in all this work in the gym just to end up uh, not getting any results, right? So mm. th- there's a whole fear of failure that I feel can hold you back. And I believe there's a very popular quote by Martin Luther King, who said, you know, you just need to take the next step. No, you know, don't, don't look at the top of the staircase, just take the next step. And I often have to remind even my coaching clients that we're just going to take it one step at a time. And uh, to be honest, that's exactly how I did it. Because if I would have focused on, I need to lose 125 pounds, it would have overwhelmed me so much. But fortunately, I I didn't really have anyone to guide me personally at that point. Uh, but I just took it week by week. You know, am I lose? Did I lose one to two pounds this week? You know, just focus on the next week. Just keep going, so one step at a time. And even if you lose two pounds a week, you know, more people want to lose like twenty pounds overnight. And yeah. if if I tell you two pounds, it doesn't seem like a lot, but two pounds a week times 52 weeks is over 100 pounds yeah so you gotta think big picture do you think the problem out there with so many individuals is they're impatient 100 percent. because they see somebody like you that's transformed their body then maybe they don't know that it's taking you you know x amount of years how long is it taking you to you know, um, I call it weight release because I don't like the word weight loss because I think if you lose something, you're going to find it, you're going to search for it, and you're going to look for it. So it's taking you how long to, to get rid of or to have that weight release? How long is it taking you? I would say in terms of all my failures and all that, let's say I started around 13 years old when I was 13. Um, I had a lot of failures along the way for five years. and then. I got really serious when I was like 18 or 19 and uh, I lost my first hundred pounds in about a year. And uh, the remaining 25 took me another year because I started to slow it down a little bit at that point because I was already uh, getting leaner. So I didn't have to go really fast, but, yeah. uh, but it's, it's been a while, you know, it's been a process of trial and experimentation and failures along the way. And, uh, but I, I've, I've been trying since I was 13 to, let's say, 20 years old. So it's, a, it's like eight years to figure it out and keep it off. And I'm, I'm 29 right now. So I've kept the weight off for almost a decade now. And that's why I brought you on the show is because of what you've done. And like you said earlier, this stuff isn't rocket science. And I think what you've done, the biggest thing of all is you've paid the price. Mm-hmm. You know, you've been rewarded and you've, um, you've been rewarded for the, the fruits of your labor. You've, you put the time into it and the effort and with time and effort, maybe, you know, energy, money, time that you've devoted to your health, you've, you've been rewarded abundantly. And what's very interesting, which, which we're going to talk about now is now that you are in a position where you're helping and serving others. So it's such a beautiful story. I believe there's a book in here for you that you're going to be an author one day because, you know, you've gone from, be, being you know overweight very unhappy with your current situation you've lost over 125 pounds you've kept it off and now you're teaching others how to do the same how cool is that you know it, it's it's actually very rare you know I, I'm, I'm not trying to brag or anything like that but if you look at the weight loss or weight release statistics right it's it's pretty discouraging because they found that over 95 to 97 percent of the people who, who try to lose a significant amount of, uh, amount of body weight, yeah. uh, let's say more than 20 pounds or so, they all gain it back within one to three years. And a lot of them even gain back more weight than what they started with, which was definitely my experience. And you know, this concept is called body fat overshooting. Mm. So, and so the if you're trying to do this 
the odds are not in your favor. You know, I don't mean to discourage your listeners, but if, you know, if it's the same thing with businesses, how many businesses are actually successful, right? Most businesses are going to fail. So, but that being said, it is possible because if an average guy like me can do it, you know, I don't have the best genetics or anything like that, but it's, it's all about persistence. You know, that's exactly what it's all about because even if you don't take perfect action, if it's good enough to get you to the next step and you're persistent with it, you'd be surprised at how, how far you can go. Yeah. I love what you said. Yeah. Go, sorry. And as Steve Jobs says, you can only connect the dots looking back, right? If you try to connect all the dots uh, looking forward, it's you're not going to be able to achieve it because it's going to overwhelm you and make you overthink things. But now that I look back at how I did it, I can connect all the dots. You know, this is what I did. I took it week by week. I focused on my strength training. You know, I didn't give up. I, I, I made my intentions clear to other people to achieve my goal. And now I'm, I, I need, I'm, I'm trying to teach other people to do the same. And I, feel, I find that even in the fitness industry, not a lot of people talk about the mindset of it. They, nope. they talk about the, the mechanics. And, uh, one of my mentors who actually helped me set up my, my who helped me actually identify and help me get my message out to the world, right? Uh, his name is Stephen James. He has a YouTube channel called Project Life Mastery. Mm-hmm. He talks a lot about mindset. And he says 80% of your success is, is your mindset. And 20% is all mechanics. Or Absolutely. How Absolutely. So if you have the mindset dialed in and you, you're a long-term player, you're in, in it for a long term, you're willing to work hard for a long time, it doesn't matter if, you, if you're not doing everything perfect. It doesn't matter if you don't have the perfect training program, the perfect diet anything like that. But if it's good enough to get you to the next step, you're going to get there eventually. And I would say, don't, don't compare yourself to other people who said they lost 20 pounds overnight because you don't even know uh, what their lifestyle is like, or, you know, or their genetics are like, but focus on your next step. Just take the next step. That's it. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the next step. I love what you said earlier. So, my next question is that comes to my mind right now. Did you ever go through times where you just wanted to just give up and quit and say, screw this transformation stuff. It doesn't work. It's a waste of time. All this work and I'm only dropped three pounds or all this work. and I've only dropped two pounds. Did you have any, have any of those moments in your transformation journey? Definitely. And I would say uh, the, the biggest thing is, seeing results is, is the biggest motivator for most people in my experience. And you know, let's say a, a person loses like a pound last week, they lost like a pound. That's like a huge motivator for them to get going. But oftentimes when it comes to uh, getting leaner, we, we all run into these plateaus, right? And that's when you need to make adjustments and you need to know how to make adjustments. It, it's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, how, uh, airplane pilots, right? They, they're always making these micro adjustments to make sure they're on the right track, right? It, yes. They might, they're not always on the right track, but when, when, they, when they know they have to make that adjustment, they, they, they make it. And it's exactly like that. So there were times when I would hit a weight loss, weight loss plateau where uh, I'd be looking at the scale and I'm like, I did all my work, I did all my cardio, and mm. I didn't lose any weight this week. And sometimes the scale is not necessarily your best friend all the time because your weight can fluctuate, right? And sometimes my weight would even go up and I'm like, am I doing the right thing? And uh, it's, but you have to trust the process, I would say, as long as you're doing the right thing. And then if you genuinely know that you're stuck, then you can make adjustments over time. But you have there. There's gonna be times where you're gonna to have to make adjustments. Just evaluate your progress. Mm. And I would say those times were really discouraging because I was doing this all on my own. And those times where I wouldn't see results in myself, like I'm not looking the any leaner, I'm not losing any weight. That's when you those thoughts definitely come in that maybe maybe I I should stop now. I should take a break. 
um, I should give up. You know, I, I definitely had those thoughts. And yeah. What kept you going though? What, what, did you look for inspiration? That word again, inspiration. Did you go online? Did you watch a certain YouTube video? Did you cut out pictures of your ideal physique? You know, did you have a mentor, coach that was in your corner, you know, pushing you on? Because Napoleon Hill talks about this in Think and Grow Rich. I refer back to this book a lot because he talks about the universal test that if one is embarking on something big, like a big weight like weight loss goer, for example, 100 pounds, mm-hmm. they're going to be faced with universal tests. Now it's all about how they respond, not necessarily react, is how they respond to the situation. Mm-hmm. So you've probably had many universal tests, and I believe it's just the universe telling you that, okay, Arned, let's see how much you want this weight loss mm-hmm. goal. Let's see how much you want it. Do you believe that's just a part of the process? hundred percent. It's part of the process. And uh, I would say looking at inspirational things definitely help you in the short term, at least, you know, they, they help you help put you in the right mindset again, you know, kind of uh, put you back on track. But at the end of the day, you have to trust the process. You have to trust yourself because if I've, I've had the situation where, I, I didn't like there's been weeks where I didn't lose any weight, but I knew that I'd put in the work in the gym. So I trusted the process that I've already done the work. So even though it might not show right now, I just need to keep going. And of course, over time, you know, if you hit a long term plateau, then I'm going to have to make adjustments. But that doesn't mean that I have to stop. I can just make adjustments. Like course correct, right? Because that rocket ship fouls its way to the moon, right? So it course corrects so it can get back on track. So it's the same thing when someone's trying to lose weight, right? Exactly the same. 100%. And and there's going to be times when it, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to, you're going to have times when, you know, you maybe go out to eat or something and you're going to lose control. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's normal because one thing to understand is that your body doesn't really want to lose weight. You know, so your your body is gonna fight back, and you gotta re, you gotta be prepared for that. It's, it's like when you when you lose weight, your your even your hormones are gonna be your hormone levels are gonna be uh, slightly uh, you know offset because the the hormones that make you hungry are gonna go high. Hormones like leptin and ghrelin. Absolutely. And the hormones that control your metabolic rate. So so it's it's like a double whammy because your you know let's say this is where your hormones are balanced before you started losing weight. Mm-hmm. And then as you lose weight, your, your hunger level goes high and then your energy expenditure goes lower. So there's two things that are working against you. So you've got to be prepared for those things because your body's going to fight. It's not, you know, just external factors that are hard. And, you know, not, it's like those factors are hard enough, right? Your environment you live in, what kind of foods you have around you, resisting temptation, all those things. But even internally, it's like your body is trying to resist you. And I always say, you know, we talk about resistance training as training in the gym, but the real resistance also comes in from, from how strong you are over here in your mind. And, and uh, have you heard of this book called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield? I have heard of it. I've not actually read it, but that is definitely, and it's interesting you talk about that book because it's been on the want list for a while. I just need to take action and go and get it. But I have so many books. Yeah. I, I, I probably buy a two, maybe three books a week right now and they're just collecting, collecting. So I want to stop for a while so I can literally start applying the information, but also get through the books as well because yeah. I don't want to be that person that just collects books and does nothing with it, you know? 100%. But that book uses the word resistance quite a bit. It's the internal resistance that stops you from doing your your best work. And if you can overcome your internal resistance, uh, you you can get started. And the only way to overcome that resistance is to get started. It's not to wait for inspiration to strike. Or, you know, when I feel like working out, I'm going to go to the gym. It's the other way around. You're going to get started first, and then you're going to feel like working out. It's not the other way around. I love what you're doing right now, how you're setting people up for success. You're telling them the truth. You're not sugarcoating anything here. You're telling them that this is going to happen. Be prepared. 
So if a man or a woman's prepared for these things to happen, you really have a head start over everybody else because you understand how things work. So you understand how, how the mind works. Mm -hmm. And I believe, as you mentioned earlier, that this is all 80% is mindset, 20% is mechanics. That is such a good statement. I'm so glad that you brought that up. Do you use positive self-talk when you, when you were trying to change your body? Was this something that you just naturally gravitated to? Not really, to be honest. Like I know a lot of people use affirmations uh, every day. It's uh, I would say so. Most people are motivated by pain and pleasure, right? Mm. Uh, I think for me, I was more motivated by pain than pleasure. So I, I, I was like, there's no way I want to go back to being that way, my mm. old lifestyle, and that prevented me from going there. So for me personally, I would say I don't use positive self talk, but my negativity i use my negativity in a positive way that i don't want to go there i never want to feel that way again because i i i think i'm as long as i'm making progress in my life i'm i'm doing the things i like i i'm i'm generally a very happy person and uh, fun fact for you you know my, my name anand in hindi it means happiness <laughs> so uh i i feel i'm a happy person in in general so i don't need that uh, positive talk yeah uh, and but even my coaching clients i have like different types you know i understand there's different psychology so i do tailor my message to based on my interviews with them right i i, I do a, a good coaching call with them at least initially to find out what kind of mindset they have and oftentimes i have to turn people down because uh even my my training programs that i have out there even before you start the programs i i tell them that the, who this program is for and who this program is not for. And I specifically tell them this program is not for you if you if you're not willing to put in the work, if you're looking for shortcuts, and if you're not willing to work hard for a long time. And, uh, you know, that's how I make it really clear. So the people who even invest in my coaching or, or my programs, they, they know what they're in for. Yeah. What, what, what type of client is your ideal client to talk to the people about this because we, 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 we're always looking, we're always looking for the next superstar or the, I'm always looking for the next superstar to transform. And I truly believe, and I might annoy some people here by saying this. I really truly believe that it's the 3% club that ever truly have permanent transformation mm -hmm. because I truly believe that anyone can transform with a decision but the real secret to all of this, and which is what you have done, is man maintained. You've maintained this healthy, vibrant person. And I feel your energy. You have great energy. And it's no accident that we are talking right now. Everything happens for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. That we're here talking about this. I truly believe that this episode is going to serve someone out there, even if it's just one person. Mm -hmm. This could be their defining moment here in your story that says, they slam their hand down on the desk and they say, that's it, I'm done. This guy can do it, so can I. Then they go out and start following you and then they ask for help and guidance because they've hit their plateau. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where I'm trying to go with this, but I just feel that what you're saying is you're bringing it back to the essence of the basics of why it's important to take care of your health because at the end of the day, we're seeing more and more people. Here's the thing that, reality here reality check for everybody obesity is getting out of control it's going up and up and up every single year you know let's not kid each other on here right mm -hmm. let's call the spade a spade mm -hmm. so it's our duty as coaches to keep pumping out the information keep serving people in order them to change because heart disease diabetes right it, it is uh, is on the rise every single day so do you truly believe that this is your your um your calling this is your your purpose if that makes sense 100 percent, 100 percent. no no question about it this this is my purpose i think this, this is what i was put on this earth for and uh, i'm doing exactly this you know and no matter how many people reach out to me i try to help them out as much as i can but at the end of the day the, you know you you are the person who has to put in the work mm. but but if you need guidance, then 
people like me or even you Troy that like people are out there you know and uh, don't don't be afraid to reach out to people you know you don't have to do this alone because you'd be surprised at how helpful people are in the fitness industry like a lot of people are intimidated you know, in terms of going to a gym or i know you mentioned the term environment initially right yeah um people are intimidated by let's say the big guys in the gym or where you know the serious bodybuilders train or powerlifters train right but the biggest thing biggest thing i did in terms of my powerlifting was i actually joined a hardcore powerlifting gym how it, how was that for you it was the, in the beginning the most, you know when i first joined the gym i was the weakest person at the gym i'm not even kidding and a lot of even a lot of the girls at the gym were stronger than me but i i that actually motivated me because mm-hmm. i saw what's possible because i was at a training at a commercial gym before that and i was squatting like two plates 225 and i thought i was pretty strong <laughs> until i got to this gym but it's like at commercial gyms they were not even allowing me to deadlift without making noise the stuff like that that again that was a whole frustration for me and i'm like enough is enough i've had it i need to yeah. join a real gym wow which is uh, the gym that i joined by the way is called boss barbell in mountain view california if you know who dan green is he owns the gym so if in you guys if you want to uh, if you're in the area and if you want to you know say hi sometimes then feel free to stop by that gym Oh that's amazing. What what's next for you? What 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 do you have on the horizon that you're excited about because I know you're you are really helping a lot of people transform their body and their health. Uh, uh, do you have any exciting projects that maybe you can talk about that maybe you can't talk about them that's coming up this year? No, 100%. So my my goal is to help a lot more people than I have before using my content. So I mean in terms of my online coaching i can only coach so many people mm-hmm. one on one right so i want to scale it up so i have two goals this year my number one goal is to get to 10000 subscribers on youtube which i'm going to be doing by putting out at least three videos a week wow consistently quality videos which are going to show people like, like not just exactly what training to do but also the mindset i feel is not talked about as often so I'm, that's my number one goal because i know if if i can get an audience of 10000 subscribers i know that i'm i'm my message resonates with people that i am making that impact right so that's that's just a goal i have and actually my i don't even have a thousand subscribers at this moment but i thought why not 10x my goals you know why not go from instead of 1000 why not 10x it right so that's my number one goal um and uh, my my youtube channel or everywhere you can find me on underdog strength so it's youtube.com slash underdog strength one word the other thing is uh like i said i want to reach more people so i've created this program called the power shred which combines power building uh training for, to lose weight so as i mentioned strength training is is has to be the core of your program and in this program i shared exactly the techniques i used to achieve my transformation and that i used with my coaching clients so then there is no guesswork for you you don't even have to worry about things like you know what supplement should i take or am i doing it right because everything's in here it's a complete comprehensive program that i'm so proud of and that i can put my name behind so those are the two things that i'm this is how i'm going to have that impact you know reaching more people through my videos and offering my program to everyone to follow you have one big supporter and that's me with, with what you're doing so uh, i really believe in what you're doing and and how you're really making a huge impact in in, in for helping people and that, and that's what it's all about and um one thing i wanted to talk about your that's that that that, that youtube handle named underdog strength man that is like i i i'm a very i'm a dreamer and I, 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 I really see I'm a visual person too. So I'm seeing right now that title for some reason on a, on a book cover, you know, New York Times bestseller. And it's about literally, you know, the, the person that's the underdog, the Rocky movie that we spoke about earlier. Cause that, again, that movie is my brother and I, we, 
we would watch those movies and be so inspired for, you know, for a couple of days afterwards. But I can resonate with you so, so much as a man, how the Rocky movies as we were growing up was such a part of our environment and a part of our, you know, journey as kids. And we had such great things like that to watch and we didn't have the internet back then. So it was all about yeah. watching the VHS or, or a DVD and watching the Rocky movies. And, and that is cool. But I see that name underdog strength as a, as a household name. I really, really, really do because you've already achieved something so already spectacular with, with your body. And now you, what you're doing is you're sharing that message with others. It's just honestly a beautiful story. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk to the listeners about anything that if, I don't know, maybe you closed your eyes right now and you, and if there was anything that came to your intuition that maybe we haven't spoken about that would really help the listeners understand about themselves or their mindset or even about their health that you would give them some, I call jewels of wisdom uh, as a way of ending this episode, as we bring this episode in for a landing. I would say people let fear hold them back, whether it's the fear of failure, fear of being judged by other people, things like that, that don't really matter, to be honest. And I would say don't let your fear hold you back. Let's say you're afraid of screwing up and you're afraid of failing in terms of weight loss, but fear is find that this is a perfect program for me. I would have never gotten started. Yeah. So I got started first. You know, I, I mean, it's it's natural to feel fear, but often fear is a good thing because it, it shows you that you're probably headed in the right direction. You know, it, it might not be the perfect direction. Or it might not stay that direction, but I think don't be afraid of failing. Yeah. I would say that's the number one thing because failure is a great teacher. And, you don't even have to learn through, you know, these days because of the internet, you can learn from other people's failures. Like if you listen to my failures, you know, why I wasn't ever able to lose weight because I was just doing these crash diets, right? And these hours of cardio. Now you can learn from that failure that this is not something you want to focus on, right? So don't be afraid of uh, failure, you know, don't let fear hold you back in life, no matter what you want to do. Yeah. It's okay for things to be messy. I always talk about how the, you can't bake a cake without getting the kitchen messy, right? So you, you got to fail. Failure is a blessing for you. Everyone has to experience it. Where can people get in touch with you regarding what you do as a coach and use you for inspiration on their journey? Are you on Instagram, Facebook? Mm -hmm. uh, my two main platforms are Instagram and YouTube. Uh, on Instagram, you know, you can feel free to send me DMs. I answer all of them. If you have any questions whatsoever, I, I'll try to help you out the best way I can. So in, at Instagram, it's underdog.strength. And the other best place is YouTube, which is where I'm going to be posting most of my content now in 2019. And that's youtube.com slash underdog strength. And I can also give you my personal email if you want to reach out to me. Absolutely. And it's Anand, that's A-N-A-N-D, at underdogstrength.com. So just my first name, at underdogstrength.com. So, um, but I just want to tell your audience that I'm here for you. You know, anything you want, feel free to reach out and I'll help you out in the best way I can. You're you're a good man. What? Uh, how many subscribers do you have so far on YouTube? I, as of today, I'm closing in on around 450. I say now, actually, no, you're going to have 451 because I'm going to subscribe as soon as I end this uh, podcast with you. The, so you're getting closer uh, and closer by the day to that 10,000. I love that goal, by the way. One step at a time, you know, one subscriber at a time. That's yes, all sir. I'm focusing on. I know 10,000 is a big goal, but I'm going to get there one at a time. When you look at the greats that are on YouTube that have built a huge following, I think people get so discouraged when they start their channel because they feel as though they've got such a long way to go. But I truly believe that those people that have, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers, millions of followers is that they've done their time. They've been in the game just a lot longer than us, right? Correct? 100%. 
hundred percent. Yeah. Well, that is it, man. That was a, f- a f- awesome episode. I, I, um, I just love what you're doing. I love what you're about and how you're spreading your message of transformation to the world. And it, I can hear it from over here. I'm in Ontario and you're in California. And one day, hopefully we can, uh, I love to, I love California. I love the sun. So I do go a lot. So I'd love to, uh, come out and see you and have a workout with you. Powerlifting meets bodybuilding. Um, oh, yeah. actually I have one more question for you before I go. For What's sure. your take on CrossFit? You know, I, I have mixed feelings about it because I feel it's not for everyone. Just like I don't teach powerlifting to everyone. Right. So I would say CrossFit is great. If you're, if you have goals of becoming good at CrossFit, whether you want to compete, I think it's great. But at the same time, it's not for everyone. Like people who are like extremely sedentary, uh, have no level of fitness, they, it might not be for them. So it's, it's a bit more advanced in my opinion, because right. there's a potential of getting injured. You know, I'm not going to take a beginner and put them through a hardcore powerlifting workout. Yeah. Just like, because uh, a lot of the movements they do in CrossFit, like snatches and clean and jerks and these Olympic lifting movements are super technical and takes Olympic lifters years to master. So I wouldn't expect, uh, let's say a mother of two who is a sedentary person has never been to a gym to be, be become proficient at these moments for like high reps. But surprisingly, like I'm, I'm glad you brought up CrossFit because I believe CrossFit was invented in a town called Santa Cruz in California, which is where I live right now. So I actually live in the, uh, the, like the mecca of CrossFit. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool, man. Yeah, I just want to go. I train at a CrossFit gym myself, and I love CrossFit gyms. You know, much more than commercial gyms because they're extremely. There's like a community aspect. They have all the barbells and equipments that I need. They never judge you. So even though I'm, do, you know, doing powerlifting when I'm traveling and stuff, I just go to CrossFit gyms. Makes sense. It makes absolute sense. I wanted to ask you one more thing. What's your uh, preference of a diet protocol? Do you have a philosophy? Maybe I'm a big fan of the intermittent fasting, but what's, what's your, um, what do you gravitate to with your clients? Yeah, I'm a fan of intermittent fasting too. Uh, I, I, most of my clients actually use intermittent fasting because it's often the simplest way of creating a, a caloric, uh, restriction Mm -hmm. because you're just reducing that eating window right yes in general i'm a fan of what is called flexible dieting and by that i don't mean that you can just go out and eat all the junk you want (laughs) and uh, just say you know i hit my calories or my protein for the day um i i do teach uh quality as well but flexibility in terms of even small things right like let's say you don't like eating broccoli but you really really like eating brussels sprouts then you can go ahead and replace it. You know what, what works for you? Because I have clients all over the world, and I'm not going to tell someone back in India to eat an American diet because they don't have those foods available. But as long as you understand basic nutrition, calories, protein, carbs, fats, and I also like to throw in dietary fiber because that's an important nutrient. Absolutely. You can pretty much eat or make your diet around what you prefer to eat and still reach your goals. Absolutely. So I love I'm, it. I'm a big fan of combining flexible dieting and intermittent fasting, but it, you don't have to do intermittent fasting if you like to eat breakfast, for example. But for the most part, most of my training clients practice a combination of intermittent fasting and flexible dieting. Perfect. Well, well, well said. So basically it depends on the individual, right? hundred percent. Beautiful phenomenal show i appreciate you i love what you're doing i mentioned it again already but keep doing what you're doing i see a book in you man no pressure i know grant Coldone will probably say the same thing you need to write a book but definitely i feel it's on the horizon for you just because of your story i think it's so inspirational and, and how you've been able to literally come from india and maybe potentially start with nothing you know unhappy unhealthy you got your health you got your health in order yeah, you, know, you took a massive decision and you paid the price and now you're in a beautiful position to serve other people. It's such a great story, man. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My and pleasure. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity today.
My pleasure. It's been an honor and a privilege to have you on The Persistence Factor.